Sophia here from my great challenge welcome back to my channel it is Sunday we have a three-day weekend this weekend for Labor Day and I got started yesterday did a lot of work on the staircase so this is my basement staircase makeover part three I'm going to show you what I've done so far what I plan on doing as well as the discovery I have made in the last two days going to show you where I'm at, um, what I've done and um, I still have a lot of sanding to do so I'm going to do that today and probably show you the before and after but I want to give you um, a little update on what I've discovered because as I was sanding other steps on the staircase I realized that some of the steps are not the same than the first one I did which tells me that some of the threads probably broke and were replaced over time and then I started thinking about, but wait a minute, um, the whole house itself, the back here, has an addition to the kitchen. And I know the house has been through renovation, like the whole basement, the way you see it now, is basically uh, boxed in to create separated room for the laundry room, the boiler room, and the tank room. So those are adds on. Um, so the basement was just one big room back in the days, right? And when you come from the deck, you have to go down, then you get on the uh, landing, and then you got to go up again to go into the kitchen, which really never made any sense to me. So I was thinking, hey, maybe the staircase was not where it is now. Maybe the staircase was moved. So I'm going to show you my discovery before we do anything else today. So if you remember from the last video, I already stained this. It's probably going to get restained again. This is just dust on it that you see. Um, so I started sanding the other steps. Um, I have every other step stained and then this one's not sanded. This is stained, not sanded. You get the idea, right? So this is the staircase that goes down to the basement. And this wood here, I thought was when I started um, sanding it, I thought that it was oak and it's not, it's pine, but it's a different pine. This is red. It's not the yellow pine that we commonly see. It's old and it's red. So it tells me that this may actually be the cypress wood that they have been using uh, as lumber for the house. And that could very well be leftover that they use, right? Then I started looking at the staircase and I know, and I've told you before, that this is not the support for the staircase and the house. Um, the support is right here in the middle. Hey, Willie! Hey. So it's a big mess right now, but you know, I'm working. So this can actually be taken out. It doesn't need to be here because it's not a support, right? But then when you look here, there's this piece right there that never made any sense. I'm talking about this. This is solid. It's got uh, a serious beam in it and it serves no purpose whatsoever, but it did not remove it. And I was thinking, well, wait a minute. Since I have the exact same thing right here at the bottom of the staircase to that's in the living room, could this be a beam that's the uh, support beam for staircase? So I was thinking, well, it would make sense because then before they did all of those rooms here that are just shit rock, I could knock them down really easily because it's just frames. What if the staircase to the basement was actually here it was either a central staircase so it was going around because most of the houses in this area when you go into the basement you don't get a straight staircase like i do they actually turn a little bit there's a landing and then it goes down so i was thinking about it and i went underneath the staircase here which i never really paid attention to until the other day so let's go dive underneath the staircase and see what we can find so i here have a flashlight we are underneath the staircase and you can see old wood right here, right? And then this is all new wood. I'm hoping I'm going to stay in focus. So this is the new staircase, right? This is the pipe that is alongside of the staircase. Um, and that's the actual water pipe that delivers hot water to the machines. Okay. So this is all new lumber right here. But if you look here, all the way on top, there is a surface um, that's kind of like a landing, right? And there's a little bit of a gap right here. I don't know if you see it. 
and I'm not going to be able to give you a focus but when you look at the hole in there there's about two and a half to three feet between this and the staircase that's above it which I find very interesting so this here believe it or not was the landing of the previous staircase all of this here and if you look at it and if you uh, compare its height it's right here so the staircase was going from here to here and had a landing which was right here this here is all shiplock and it's hollow i think the staircase was going this way um not central but was going from making a turn had a landing and was going this way in the past so the original staircase to the basement was definitely not against the wall it was going this way you see the little um, post here right this thing it was going down this way onto a landing and then it was making a turn into the um, laundry room right and what does it mean for the rest of the house in particular the upstairs well when you look at my staircase here don't mind the mess I'm working okay when you look at my staircase here you can see that there's the wall um, right here which is the wall I will actually cover but I'll tell you that in a second and then there's this ledge here and I think that this ledge was actually a support for a floor that was right here. And this part right here underneath the living room staircase was a closet. And the entrance to the basement um, was here because this is all new frame. This is not a support wall. This is all new framing. So there was a door right here that was going down to the basement. Now, there's an addition to the kitchen, right, um, which is beyond the door I'm facing, which is the back door. But when you look at the kitchen on the outside, there's an old vent that's on the side where the sink is. And that's one of the vents that you would use when you had a stove, right? So you would come in this way and you would uh, walk probably into a full kitchen because the wall that's right here on the side of the kitchen this is all framed too this is not a support wall this is not the original wall this was added on so I was thinking this if they wanted to move the staircase when they did the addition right um, and put it on against the wall they had to lower the floor because um, if the floor was about it's almost 10 inches higher if it was the closet, right? If you had kept it this way, you would have hit your head on the part that's right here, right? So they had to lower this floor. And in order to do that, they lowered it. And they also lowered the um, back entrance to make it leveled right and then they had to add steps because they were below the kitchen they had to add steps right behind me right here I have steps that go into my kitchen so you come into the house originally the door was probably higher there probably was five steps to get onto the back door but they lowered the floor so they had to drop that so they had less steps but then they had to compensate once they get into the kitchen and they had to add those steps right here when you walk into the kitchen okay so what does it mean with regards to the deck okay so the deck was built way later the deck is actually only 15 years old it's in poor shape I definitely have to redo the deck or restain it or whatever but that's gonna come in later on um, but there is an ordinance in town that requires decks to be a particular height. So if you're gonna do a deck in the back and you already lowered the back door because you don't no longer have the amount of steps you used to have, you're gonna to have to do a deck, but then how do you get to the back door? So you have to do steps that go down. And that's why my deck, <laughs> you go up the deck and then you're on the deck and then you gotta go back down the deck in order to get to the back entrance. And then you gotta go back up here to get into the kitchen so it all unraveled itself this week and I'm fascinated I would love to get my hands on the original plans for the house so there's absolutely no doubt that where the staircase here 
where the staircase is now is not where the staircase was. The entrance to the staircase was probably over here and it was probably making a turn, like it was not a spiral staircase, but it had like one landing and a turn. And the staircase, um, the under the staircase, that's right here was a closet when you walk in and that would make sense, right? So that was my tidbit of a story. Let me show you where I am at now. So yesterday I worked very hard and you can see there's some dark and some light. The light is what I need to sand today. The rest was sanded already and stained. I'm only doing one coat right now. Um, and the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want the steps to get dirty before I can finalize the stain and the varnish on it. So I'm just pre-staining them just to protect the wood. So today I have to finish sanding this one, send this one, this one, and this one. So I have my work cut out for me. And then I finished the post here, which I had not finished the other day. Um, I filled, you can see, still see a little bit of pink. I filled in the big crack that was um, in between the post and the first uh, rail right here. Um, whatever you want to call it. I'm spindle, I'm not sure. So I was thinking if I sand it and do it in a stained color, then I can't have this white piece here. I would have the stained post, then there would be a gap, and then I would have the white um, that would continue throughout the staircase. So I've decided to keep it uh, white. So I filled in the entire crack here. All of this here needs to be sanded. I finished the part here that's in the corner and I did the same thing here on the other side and then I went in and I filled in all of the cracks that were throughout the entire stair. So I'm not sure if you can see it, but there was a lot of cracks. Um, all of this here needs to be sanded, all of it, right? I filled in this and this and underneath here, this whole part here. This part here, there's nothing I can do about it. It has to stay here. This is the emergency stop for the boiler, right? Uh, with cobwebs over it, yep. Um, over here, I had an old fire alarm. Um, I removed it, so all of this, you see the dent here, all of this needs to be sanded down and I have to repaint it so there's not going to be anything here. I'm going to replace the fire alarm and probably put it on the ceiling over there. I did add this little light here that's remote control. Um, so when you go down, you can actually see the bottom of the steps. And my biggest problem in the staircase is this ugly wall. I have the original wall um, of the basement alongside the stairs. So this part here was framed and they did the sheet rod, the insulation and everything, but not here. And I was thinking of ways I could hide it. And the pipe here is also a problem. So I'm going to cover the walls. I'm going to show you what I'm going to cover them with. But I want you to know that where the part here that was supporting the original floor, remember this little ledge here, there's going to be a box like this. So this is going to be boxed in and then in order to hide the pipe here this is going to be boxed in as well and the box is probably going to extend up to here with a little bit of a gap underneath it and that gap is going to allow me to put big board. So I'm just going to show you real quick what it's going to look like. So this is a piece of big board that I purchased. I'm going to put it, um, I'm going to put another one on top right here so you can appreciate how it's going to cover the whole wall. Right, so imagine this is going all the way up here. So basically this is what it's going to look like, right, with a box here that's going to cover the whole thing. So there's going to be um, uh, like a ledge, right, and then over here it's going to do the same thing. And then I'm going to frame it with three quarter round that's going to go on the steps and there's going to be three quarter round here as well. My biggest issue is this monster right here. This is part of the um, sump pump system. The sump pump is in the uh, um, tank room. So basically, behind, and I talked about it when I was doing the um, renovation of the um, laundry room, right? 
underneath this, I'm gonna try to remove it a little bit. All right, so I don't know if you can see it, but there is a hole there, right? So if there is water damage in the house, um, in the basement, the water goes into the little trench that's underneath that and it goes straight to the sump pump. Now, if I put a bead right here or a uh, marble, it will roll all the way to the center of the room. So I can actually cover this. This still exists underneath this. It still exists underneath that. I'm going to remove this and this is going to be covered with um, a similar type of board at the bottom to finish it off. Um, that way I don't have to see it anymore because I'm just tired of it. It's just so unsightly. So I hope you enjoyed the little story of my discovery about the house. Um, I think this is going to look really, really good. And by the way, the beadboard that you see right here, I called in Wayne Scotting because that's what people do. They put the beadboard and then they put the little rail, um, chair rail, and they call it Wayne Scotting, but really it's beadboard, right? I'm going to do the same thing on this side, um, right here, right, with the frame as well. So I think it's going to frame the staircase very nicely. All of this is going to get painted in white. Um, my only issue after that is how am I going to put the rail, the handrail back. Because if I box this in right here, the handrail holes were here. Um, so I'm not going to be able to put the rail at the same spot. I'm going to have to lift it a little bit. So I don't know how it's going to work with regards to the angle at which it's going to be. But you know what? We're going to have to deal with it when we get there. Um, maybe I won't have a handrail. <laughs> maybe I'll just do like like one of those ropes that people have. Well, I'll do something different. Anyway, I'm going to start sanding um, my steps. So I'll see you in a second. And I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done with it. Um, and then I'll sand all of this work here because that really needs to be um, sanded before I do anything. Um, I don't want to have the stain and the uh, varnish and still be sanding. All of this needs to be sanded before I tackle the final coats on the steps. So I did all the rough surfaces, uh, you know, with the rough grit on uh, all the steps. And I kicked Willie out and I was wearing a mask actually, because I'm telling you, this is totally different wood. Um, it comes out as a, almost like a talcum powder when you sand it. And I know now why it's so difficult to remove the paint off of it. It's because when they installed these, the previous owner, whoever it was, um, painted directly on and sanded wood so all of the paint went into the grooves it was really not a nice smooth surface so it's still a little rough right now um i vacuumed the whole thing because you know i mean i had that dust all over the place i'm gonna take a break and then i'll come back and do another round not with the rough but with the medium grit then i'll do a round with the smooth grit and then the rest i'll finish by hand but let me tell you this is hard work, y'all. This is really, really hard work. So this is really difficult, but you guys know me. I'm up for any challenge. Um, it's going to take me another probably three hours. Now I'm exaggerating. Um, I don't know, maybe two hours to finish the sanding on the steps and do the sanding on all of the white part here. Uh, and when I'm done with that, what I'll do is that I'll seriously clean the basement because I don't want to do any other work with the residue of dust that I have on the floor here and then you know the surfaces behind me so I'll do that and um, then I'll be able to do the bead work but the uh, bead boards but wow okay I'm ready
Okay, steps are done. Um, I just wiped them off with a, a wet cloth so they have to dry before I can put any um, stain on them. But now I'm going to start sanding all of this. I want to see what it looks like if I do it by hand only. Um, instead of doing it with the machine, because uh, I want a smooth surface, but I'm afraid that if I do it with the sander, the electric sander, it's going to remove too much of it, and then I'm going to end up having to repatch, right? I'm trying to avoid too much work, so let's see. Well, <laughs> too late for that. This is going all around. I patched here, 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 and on the other side. I'm going to do the front here by hand, so maybe you can see. Yeah, doing it by hand works. I don't know if you can see. Let me see if I can give you more of an angle. Right. Can you see the difference? This is done. Right. It's nice and smooth. This is still rough. So doing it by hand works. Let me do the underside. Okay. Good. Once it's painted, you won't see anything. This is the best part of doing DIY, is that you get to teach your kids. Willie, you see the hole right here? Yeah. Okay. So you take the spackle and you press on it like this, right? It's hard for me to do it because I have the camera in my hand. But do you see what I'm doing? Yep. Okay, hold on. So now, what you want to do is fill in the hole, but you don't want too much spackle outside of it, right? So you just go like this and you press hard on it and you get all the extra out. So that way you don't have to sand too much. But your hole is filled up. You see the hole right here? Yeah. Okay, it's filled up. Your turn. You guys, I'm filling up all the cracks that were in there. That's concrete, by the way. I have no idea what's going on with this house. Okay, well, it's right here. So let's see how you do. I press hard. Good? Hey, I think you got it. Nope, I didn't. You did it? Nope. Never. Okay, all right, so remove the excess. Scrape it on the side. Right? Nah. Yeah, I'll just use this side. Okay. No, no, not that way. That way. Here you go. Press hard. Very good. What's going on here? Whoop. Uh oh. You just put some more. There. All right. Hey. What? You're doing good. I know. Thank you. Hey, look, that thing's starting to dry, the one you just did. Yeah, it dries fast, right? Okay, so right there, this is concrete. I don't know why, but we're going to go with it. There were some big dings and stuff, so I filled that up, but that's going to get sanded later on when I'm um, ready to paint the risers. Um, this is still a little wet, so I'm going to wait a little bit. All of this here has been sanded and nicely filled, so you're not going to be able to see the seams. I, you saw that, I sanded um, the whole area here where I had the old um, fire alarm and um, that's going to be sanded later on. And then I patched the holes that were here on the corners, if you remember from when they tried to get the machine out of the way. Uh, so that's sanded as well and ready to go. And then everything here is done and pretty much clean. So what I'm starting to do is clean up the whole mess here. Because when I start doing the paneling here, I'm going to start with this one so I can learn how to do it. Um, I don't want any of this garbage. None of it. And I have to clean all the dust from this area. And then uh, that'll be it. So next time you see me, I will be patching little holes like these. I forgot those. Did not see those. So that's going to get patched. Um, I'll be back in a few seconds when I've got everything clean and I'm ready to stain the rest of the steps.
So everything has been vacuumed and clean. I got all the stuff back where it belongs. Um, everything is sanded except the part that's up there and then the new stuff I did on the other side. And I hope you can see it um, since I still have some daylight. But here are the steps. And I have some of them are a little bit lighter. It's because there's only two coats. Like this one only has two coats. This one has three. This one has three. This one has two. But here is the staircase. So now don't worry about the spills on the side because uh, all of this is getting repainted in white. And then on the corner, I have the paneling and the quarter round. So you won't see any of that. It's going to be seamless. Um, I got to tell you, this is by far, um, I'm not going to say one of my best work, but this is the most satisfying result <laughs> out of all of my DIYs. Because let me tell you, this staircase looks like it's brand new now. And it looks like a real staircase. It doesn't look like a basement staircase. Um, the wood is absolutely gorgeous. And I don't have any varnish on it. This is just the min wax gun smoke, which really is my favorite color. I absolutely love. So kudos for um, min wax folks for coming up with a stunning color. This is almost like a mahogany. It's got the red of it, but it still has the gold of oak and pine. It's a beautiful color. Imagine what it's going to look like, right? Use your imagination. Once I have all of this painted white and nice, once I have the quarter round, once I have the paneling, on both sides right the whole thing here is going to get paneled and once this is all nicely painted it's going to look like a brand new stairs brand new staircase um wow i'm really loving this project it is a lot of work not gonna lie this was probably the most gruesome part but it's done with i just gotta put the tongue oil later on after i put a third coat and everybody is saturated with color love it love 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 it I'm looking a mess and I don't care <laughs> so, because I'm working okay but this is not a glamorous job you guys you tell me down below what do you think what do you think of the staircase the way it looks now the color I put on it the way it's been sanded and what do you think of the idea of putting the um, paneling along the wall and boxing the two area the one right here and the one up there um, I think it's gonna look really nice if I do it nice I'm taking my time for this project um, all of the seams here are splendid. <laughs> Just, I don't usually say things like this, but they really are. Um, you can feel them. They, it's really nice. I, I'm hoping, you know, you appreciate the work on this and you can see that, um, you know, I put an effort into this one because it's, it's important to me. Um, I want my projects to start looking like not temporary stuff, but permanent. So I'm hoping this is going to be a permanent one um i still don't know what to do with this area here i don't know if i want to cover it um i may i don't know I, I i would have to get really creative and maybe um do the beadboard up to here and then up to here only and just do like a crown molding i don't know how it would look so i have to think about it because I, I just don't like the way this look right now i just i never did actually remember when i did this and i covered the wall um I put the wall in between, right? I thought that maybe I should do the other side and I just, I guess I got fed up with the project and I didn't do it, but I'm thinking I should have. Um, I really should have. And it's straight, so I'm sure I could put a panel in. I don't know, maybe ship like do a whole wall with ship like I don't know. I gotta think about it. This is not the most important part for me. The most important part is gonna be in the next video when I start doing the paneling uh, on this wall. So next time you see me, I will be doing paneling here and I would be doing all of the molding with the quad around um, along the steps. So that's going to require a lot of math for angles and or geometry rather and then I'll do the, uh, the corners here as well. Until then, uh, for me it's going to be not too long from now because everything is clean so I'm going to go upstairs, take a break, have a cup of coffee. Um, Scott went to the supermarket so I'm waiting for him to come back probably we'll have lunch and then I'll get back into that so I'll be wearing the same stuff on um, you know I film back to back so the next time I see you I will be doing the beadboard on one side of the wall and I'm super excited about that because I've never done it before 
it's going to be difficult with the angles, but I have a miter uh, box, so I should be able to do that. It's just a matter of having the right angles, right? Doing them in the right direction um, to do the steps. And that would be it. So I'll see you next time. Give me a big thumbs up if you like this project and the ideas I have with the beadboard. And if you're looking forward to seeing the next episode, don't forget to comment down below and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching, you guys. Bye.